Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship with Streetsville United Church. It's wonderful to have you joining us today. I would like to extend a very special thank you to everyone who has worked to make this service possible this week with our wonderful tech team and music leadership. Thank you very much to them. Uh, A few announcements before we begin our worship. Our first is about the coldest night of the year. And we are off to a phenomenal start. We have now raised more than our goal, which is wonderful, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna stop. So there's still time if you would like to make a donation to one of our walkers, or if you'd like to join the team yourself, you can do that. You can do that by going to the website, www.cnoy.org. Also, Lent begins next week. A few announcements about that. First of all, we will be having a virtual Ash Wednesday worship service in the evening on the 17th. And we're going to be doing this with five other churches in the area. Some information has been emailed out to you and more will be coming as well. So stay tuned for that and I hope you can join us. As well, I will be having a study group through Lent. Three sessions at 7 o'clock at night happening on March 1st. March 15th, and March 29th. If you're interested and would like to sign up for that, please send me an email, and I'll make sure that you get all the information you need to take part. As well, because Lent is beginning next week, we will also be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion together next week in our worship. So through the week, give a little bit of thought um, on what you might use for the elements to celebrate that with us. And now let's take a moment to acknowledge the land. We acknowledge that our church is on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, the First Peoples gathered, loved, celebrated, created, and overcame great obstacles on this land. We give thanks that we can create community here too, and we pray that the communities we create will be spaces of peace and respect for all. Now please join me in our responsive call to worship. Lord, you have called us to the mountaintop. Help us to look forward to where you would have us go. Help us to listen carefully to the words of your healing love. Open our hearts and spirits to receive your encouragement and your hope. Place your trust in the Lord 
in all your ways. Lord, we have come here to give our lives to you. Let us pray. God, it seems so long ago that we heard your words at Jesus' baptism. You reminded us that he is your beloved son with whom you are well pleased. Again today, we hear your words that we are to listen to him, to pay attention. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to hear the words of Jesus, to follow in his footsteps, and to serve you. Help us to find courage to be your disciples and help us to find strength for the road ahead through the light, life, and promises of Jesus. We pray in his name and in the words he taught us, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is, We Have Come at Christ's Own Bidding. Knowing that forgiveness is offered to all who come with repentant hearts, I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession. Forgive us, Lord, when we are stubborn and willful. Remind us that you are with us wherever we are. 
You call us from the mountaintop to go to the valley where there is struggle and pain, where healing is needed. Prepare us, Lord, for the journey. Help us to listen to you. Heal us, Lord. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Get up and do not be afraid. Listen to Jesus. He will guide you and care for you. And having forgiven us and offered new life, he will help you find your way. Thanks be to God. And now the Boomer Band will share some music with us. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty, my soul belongs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied within your presence. I sing shadow of your wings. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. One thing I'd ask and I would seek To see your beauty To find you in the place your glory dwells One thing I'd ask and I would seek To see your beauty To find you your glory dwells. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water for my soul. I tasted and I seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day in thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day. Let us pray. God of love and wisdom, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is the story of the transfiguration, which is found in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Let us listen for the word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, 
and one for Elijah. When he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by their fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us pray. God, through me or in spite of me, please speak to your people. Amen. One day, years ago, I remember my father coming into the house to find me. He was very excited, asking me if I would like to see sunspots. And my father, an astronomy buff, had rigged his small telescope with a special lens so that we could look at the sun without burning our eyes. And as I looked into the telescope, I was amazed to see the spots. You would never imagine that the sun had such variety on her face. These stormy spots, sometimes the size of Jupiter, are caused by intense magnetic fields that occur, combined with the rotation of the sun. And sometimes they happen, and sometimes they don't. But they are an amazing thing to see with your own eyes. And this isn't the only spectacular phenomenon that occurs on the sun. There is also something called a coronal mass ejection in which billions of tons of charged particles escape from the sun's corona and dump trillions of watts of power into Earth's upper atmosphere. Now, this can overload power lines, causing massive blackouts, and destroy delicate instruments in the satellites in Earth's orbit, but it can also intensify our already brilliant northern lights. Although the sun has been burning for 4.6 billion years, it is only in the last decade or so that scientists have begun to understand it. And one thing is clear. Our sun is a very stormy star, existing with the tensions of life and huge upset. Source of our energy, connection to power, but heartbreak and agony, struggle and suffering, light, and life, and the promise for tomorrow. Just as all of these come together in our hot sun, these contradictory pieces, we'll see, come together in Jesus, too. Today in our story of the Transfiguration, we are told that Jesus' face shone like the sun. The theological and symbolic meaning of this passage is clear. As we prepare to begin our journey through the season of Lent, we are told that, like the sun, Jesus is the source of our light and life, the very center of our life, and the one who can lead us through our storms. And it is an important reminder before Lent begins because this is a very challenging time in our church year. This 40-day walk into the wilderness will bring us face to face with the depth of our lacking, our human frailty, and our sin. It will bring us to the cross, to the very worst the world could do to Jesus. But on the other side is new life. On the other side is the promise of Easter. The story of the transfiguration that we explore today is one that we're not really meant to understand until we find ourselves on that other side of Good Friday, until we experience the joy of Easter morning and we sit for a moment and reflect back on everything that happened. Today, it is just a glimpse. It is a story that is as confusing and strange to us as it must have been to the disciples in the midst of it. 
What started out as an ordinary walk up a mountain turned into a life-changing moment when the disciples first began to clearly see Jesus. Like an astronomer gazing through a telescope, the disciples were given an unobstructed view as to who Jesus really is, the power and the place of Jesus among the prophets and with God. And we may never know exactly the experience they had together that day, but one thing is clear. On that mountaintop, they finally, really began to understand. And their reactions were mixed. This was so different from their ordinary experience. They became afraid. And in what seemed like a completely bizarre moment, Peter offers to build a house for Jesus and the prophets right there on the mountain. And it seems absurd, but to cut Peter some slack, he was only doing what felt right. He was trying to show respect and trying desperately to put the events within the context of his human understanding. He wanted to protect Jesus. He wanted to contain the power of God in one place so that others could come and experience it too. In his own way, despite his confusion and despite his fear, he did not want this event to end. And he wanted to share it with others. And they would. Others would experience it. But not in the way the disciples thought. Not in the way that they had been raised to believe that God would behave. Jesus was not this fiery ball of divine light who was content to stay on a mountaintop away from his people, untouchable. As strange as the disciples' experience was on that mountaintop, as bizarre as the event seemed within their understanding, even more bizarre events are about to occur as they travel with Jesus to Jerusalem and experience those events that we now know as Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter morning. If the story of Good Friday and Easter were written like a novel, today's story of the Transfiguration would be the preface. Those few pages, sometimes included before the chapters start, that give the reader a taste of the excitement that is to come. Jesus' face shines like the sun and he is surrounded by the respected and powerful prophets that went before him. The voice of God declares that Jesus is the Son of God. And then just as quickly as it all started, Jesus reaches out and touches the disciples and tells them to not be afraid. And then it all fades away. It is here that the preface would end and the actual story of the journey toward Good Friday would begin. With a simple human touch and a few kind words, the greatest power in the universe creates sacred, holy ground between these friends, between us, between all of God's children. The image of the invisible God is seen in the face of a caring man. The source of all light and life on earth is revealed to be Jesus of Nazareth, the one who walks with us down that mountain and stays with us through all of our hardships, reminding us that God is with us, always with us, and that he will never let us go. What a blessing as we prepare to enter Lent. What a blessing as we prepare for our second Lent in pandemic. As we live in this current state of precarity, as we worry about the future and wait for vaccines, and we see the absolute best and absolute worst in the people around us. What a blessing in a world filled with fear, and uncertainty. Get up and do not be afraid. Get up. Do not be afraid. 
That is what the mightiest power in the universe says to us when we feel frightened by this pandemic, when we feel beaten down by the economic uncertainties of lockdown, when we are soiled by our own mistakes and depressed by mental, physical, or spiritual deterioration. Get up, says Jesus. I am offering you light and new life. The incredible promise of the resurrection is that there is always new life to be found on the other side of suffering and death. Do not be afraid, counsels Jesus. I am going to walk with you and assure you of the presence of God in your life. The greatest guarantee of Christ's companionship is that nothing in all creation, no pain or crying, no virus or lockdown, no suffering or dying, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is something we need to remember as we begin our journey through Lent, as we face the frustration of another Lent in pandemic, in precarity, as we face the despair of all of our personal Good Fridays, those moments when our dreams seem crushed, when everything we know seems turned upside down. Today we are reminded that whatever may confront us further down the road, that the love of God come to us in Jesus Christ will never fail us. Just when we think we've reached the end of the road, we will be surprised by a new beginning. About 27 years ago, there was a full eclipse of the sun that could be seen here. And I must have been on holidays from university and was home visiting my parents who both had to go to work. But before he left for work, my dad gave me two pieces of glass out of his welder's mask that he had taped together into one thick, seemingly impenetrable mask. And with it, I would be able to go outside and watch the entire eclipse, even at its most intense. I was a little dubious that I would be able to see anything through it because when I held the double-thick welder's glass up to the kitchen light, I couldn't see a thing. Trust me, he said, it will work. And it did. As I noticed the light outside changing in that indescribable way it does when there's a full eclipse, I went outside. I kind of guessed in the general direction where the sun should be. I held up the glass to my eyes and I looked. I could not believe what I saw as the shadow began to pass in front of the face of the sun. It was absolutely incredible and mystical and even a little terrifying. I could imagine the horror that must have faced early humanity when such a phenomenon occurred, because there are few things more frightening than seeing the sun dim at midday. A primitive panic seems to creep up within you, and I did have to remind myself that it was okay. Once I got comfortable in the changing and ever-darkening environment, I jumped up on the hood of my car and I leaned back against the front windshield and I just kept looking up through that mask. The most stunning sight was at the moment of full eclipse when all along the edges, intensely bright light peeked out from the blackness. I'd never seen anything like it or have seen anything like it since. I would look down, remove the mask, look at the world around me, enveloped in this strange, almost sickening dullness, a disconcerting light, like something was dying. And then, unable to stand it anymore, I would put the mask back on and look up at the covered sun and remind myself that it was still there, that beyond the dark shadow, it was still there, shining, along the edges. I stayed like that until I watched the shadow move away and reveal the full sun again. 
My understanding of God always comes back to that experience on the hood of my car during that full solar eclipse. It was so much like God, like the light that shines through all of the panicky shadows of our life. And yet God is still so much more. Like the sun that shines in our sky, there are things about God that we can begin to understand and some that we just aren't ready to understand or not yet wise enough to understand. And for now, we must be content to live with that mystery. And until the time when we can fully see, may we be reassured and led through all of our personal storms by that voice telling us to not be afraid and the hope and the promise of new beginnings and of shadows finally slipping away. May we be encouraged with the hope that swirls around us, brought to life through the energy of Christ at the center of our life. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is Jesus on the Mountain Peak. Let us pray. God, we can imagine what it must have been like for Jesus' friends on the mountain with him, seeing something so amazing, being filled with both confusion and joy and trying to make sense of it all. And we know what it is like to just want to stay on the mountain too, God, to stay with you and not have to face what is happening in the world, to find a place of calm, and not get involved in all of the messiness of this world. But you call us into the world. You call us to go and follow you into the world to care for your creation and your children. You call us to rejoice and to work for justice, to reflect light into the darkness, and to preach the good news of new life and forgiveness of sins, of a world transformed and of lives renewed. So give us courage, God. Give us courage to follow you into this world and give us hope to see our way to your promises, even when the road we are on is difficult. Our prayers today are not only for ourselves, but we also turn over to you all of the prayers of our hearts, those that are known to this community and those that are known only to us individually. We pray for all who are dealing with challenging circumstances of all kinds. Especially we pray for those who have been made unwell by COVID, 
for those who are caring for those who are unwell, and for all whose lives have been turned upside down. We pray for all who are grieving this day. We pray for those who have been relying on virtual learning, those who are trying to homeschool. We pray for those who have lost employment, are worried about their housing situation. We pray for those struggling with anxiety and fear, for those facing increased financial challenges. We pray for our world, that we may be led to respond to issues of inequality, vaccine scarcity, global warming, and climate change with wisdom and determination so that all may be safe, all may have opportunities, and so that future generations may experience in the full glory of your creation, God. May we all be led in wisdom and grace to work together and to help one another to find our way forward and solve problems we face. Finally, God, we do pray for ourselves and for this community. May the courage and hope in your promise of transformation and new life echo into the darkest corners of our life. May we find hope in you, even as the world around us feels so uncertain. May we be strengthened to confront our fears and our challenges. And may we have the courage and determination to reach out to bring your hope to our hurting world. May we each be reminded and believe that through your love exist endless possibilities and endless promise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is O World of God.
And now go into this world and be not afraid because the love of God is upon you this day and always. Go with hope and with joy. Amen. Thank you.